All right, so then back to the heart. And now we're looking at a cross section, so a frontal cross section, and I believe this is a picture of a human heart. Now, what I want you to look at is look at the ventricles. Here we have your left ventricle, and here we have the right ventricle. Now, let's go to top hat really quick. Which ventricle has more muscle? Okay, so basically, which side is thicker, the left or the right? And most of you said the left ventricle has more muscle, and most of you are correct. So this part right here is actually shared by the left and right ventricle, but look at this big slab of meat right here, the left ventricle. And over here, the right ventricle, notice that the wall is relatively thin. So the left ventricle does have a thicker wall than the right ventricle. Now, why is that important? So why is that important? Well, again, the left ventricle has a thicker wall, especially on the part that's not shared in that part between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So what we have here is that the left ventricle wall, whether it's relaxed, when the, whether the whole heart is relaxed or contracted, the left ventricle wall, especially the part that's not shared, is going to be thicker than the right ventricle wall. And this happens whether it's relaxed or contracted. The left ventricle wall is still thicker than the right ventricle wall. Now, think about the right ventricle. Again, it's pumping deoxygenated blood. But where is it going to go to? Well, initially through the pulmonary trunk and then through the pulmonary arteries. But where do the pulmonary arteries lead to? They lead to the alveoli of the lungs, the inner part of the lungs. So that's where they go to. Now, how about the right? So that was the right side of the heart. What about the left side of the heart? The left side of the heart, the left ventricle is going to pump blood to, again, through the aorta, and it's going to pump blood to the rest of the body. Now, this is where I want you to know. The right ventricle is pumping to the lungs. The left ventricle is pumping to the rest of the body. Who has the bigger workload? Who has to do more? The, which has more mass, the lungs or the rest of the body? <laughs> Probably the rest of the body, right? So this is one big reason why the left ventricle is bigger and has more muscle because it has a harder job to do. So another analogy is like, why does this myocardial thickness matter? So pretend this is part of your circulatory system and you want muscle to pump your blood through the circulatory system. So here we have two guys who are pretty muscular and their job is to carry a bucket of blood or a bucket of liquid through this vessel. And yeah, this is actually the same guy. This is Chris Evans. Like, if I actually, I wonder if some of you were even born then. I should look up when the this was like before the Michael B. Jordan version, but he used to be the Human Torch, and this is him as Captain America. But yeah, same guy, but definitely with more muscle. Now, thing is that with your lungs, your what you call our pulmonary circuit, the blood flow leading to and from your lungs, is different from your systemic circuit, which is lead, blood flow leading from to and from the rest of your body and your heart. So here's the example. So here we have two chambers and two vessels. So what we have here are two hallways. And then this is a shorter hallway, and this is a longer hallway. And why am I coloring it blue and red? Well, this is the pulmonary circuit, and this is the systemic circuit. So the pulmonary circuit is shorter, and the systemic circuit, well, if I show it to scale, it would be like zooming way off to the side, but I'm just showing it so it can fit in the slide. Now we might think, okay, so maybe if we want the, both of these guys to reach the end at the same time, maybe we'll give it to the part that's the guy that's more athletic. But that's not the only twist there. Not only is the systemic circuit longer, it also has, okay, to use our superhero analogy, there's also more things kind of impeding their flow. So what we have here is that in the pulmonary circuit, you don't have um, all these guys in this chamber. Versus in this chamber number two, you have all these guys going in the way between point A, your starting point, and your goal destination. Now, we have these two choices. We have these two guys who can carry this liquid. Who do, who do we want to assign to this chamber up here? That's shorter, not too many baddies in the way. And who do we want to assign to the part that's longer, the longer corridor that has more baddies and more resistance along the way? Maybe you want to put the guy that has more muscle in the longer chamber, because why? The thing is that between your lungs and the heart, is that, or between the chambers of the heart, 
they actually have to maintain pace with each other because what happens is if one carries pumps more blood than the other well it's going to start to back up in the side that's not pumping as much blood so yeah in the end you want the part with more muscle to give, be given the harder task so this is why you give the guy with more the part of the ventricle with more muscle the task of pumping that more blood because why it has further distance to carry that blood again it's going to go all over the body versus the pulmonary circuit that only has that short distance between the heart and the lungs but not only that there's a concept we'll cover very soon called resistance there's more overall resistance in the systemic circuit compared to the pulmonary circuit so again that's why the left ventricle is thicker